Welcome to this developer introductory tutorial for Core Animator. In this video, I'd like to tell you what Core Animator is and how to use it from a developer's perspective. We'll talk about this in the context of a small project. Here is a Core Animator project that our designer created. He wants to include this UI element in our iOS app. He's also added animations that we need to include. Okay, great, let's do it. But first of all, what is Core Animator? Core Animator is essentially a visual editor for the Core Animation Framework and a code generation tool. After you or your designer create animations, they can be exported into Swift or Objective-C code that then uses the Core Animation Framework to exactly reproduce those animations. So what's in the generated code? It's really just one class that is created for each Core Animator project and the name of the generated class is simply the name of the project with view appended to it. On iOS, the generated class is a UI view subclass. On OS X, an NS view. Though for this video, we are going to generate iOS code. So in this case, we have a project called Trash. We'll end up with a UI view subclass called Trash View. The Trash View represents the canvas in your project. Note that the canvas, like views, is measured in points rather than pixels. Each element and each group in your core project gets represented in code by a UI view or UI image view in the hierarchy. So here we have three elements. They will become three views in the view hierarchy. You can see that our designer added two animations to the project, open lid and close lid. These animations get exported as method calls on the trash view class. So the name of the animations is important as they will be the method names that can be called from code to start the animations. Okay, let's go ahead and add this view to a project. We have this new project that we've created. All we've added is two buttons that we'll use to demonstrate how easy it is to run uh, from code animations that were defined in Core Animator. So now let's export our Core Animator project. Exporting a Core Animator project is the step where the code actually gets generated. It's also the step where all the images needed to recreate the animations are placed into a single images directory alongside the code files. So here is the preview export sheet you'll have some control over the code that is generated. First we'll select the platform, iOS, uh, then we'll select the language, we'll leave it Swift, and let's not clip to bounds, uh, and include our images. So then we just hit export. And I'm going to export it to the same directory that the Core Animator project is located in. So we'll want to add these files to the Xcode project. Um, what I'm going to do is just take this folder and m just move it into where our Xcode project is. Jump over to Xcode and add the files. A quick note on the Core Animator project itself. You're actually not going to want that to be included in your target. I mean, while not strictly mandatory, we do recommend adding the actual core animator project to source control, right? Make it a part of your project. This will allow you or your designer to go back and make changes or updates down the road and then easily re-export the updated code and or images. Now that the trash view class has been added to our Xcode project, we can use it just like we use any other class. You can programmatically instantiate it or add a custom view to a storyboard or nib. Working with the Core Animated View and Interface Builder is especially cool because the generated class is marked as IB designable and can be previewed at design time. And that's actually exactly what we're going to do right now. So we'll jump over to the storyboard and add a new UI view uh, to the scene. We're going to change its class to our custom class trash view. 
Now it's actually changed here, but because the images we used were white and it's on a white background, you actually can't see it right now until we change the background color. And there you go. Now that our view is here in the storyboard, uh, we'll want to point out a couple of things. Right now, as you resize its view, uh, it's just scaling to fill to fill its bounds. This is often not what you want. Um, so this, so the the UI view subclass, it actually does respect the um, content mode property of UI view. So here we can change it to aspect aspect fit or aspect fill. Uh, for this project, we're going to use aspect fit. So you can see kind of how that reacts. Uh, what we're going to do, let's just center it. Oops. We'll give it a size and we'll also center it in its parent. All right, now let's just run it, make sure we're on track here. And here you go, here's our project. And it's showing up, uh, which is great. Uh, now we just want to demonstrate how to run the animations, the open lid and the closed lid animations that were defined in our Cryomator project. So first, of course, we'll need a reference to this trash view so that we can call its methods. Here we'll just call it trash. And we've already hooked up uh, this open and close, these open and close methods uh, to the buttons here at the bottom. So we'll just fill it in. So when the open lid um, function is run, trash.add open animation. And likewise down here, add close animation. So we'll run that and take a look. So we hit the open button, it opens up, hit the close button, it closes back down. And that really is it for the basics of Core Animator. I uh, hope you'll get to watch some of the other videos for some other uh, techniques, but I um, hope you've seen just how easy it is to incorporate into a project. Um, from the developer's point of view, it's, it's just a view with methods that you can call that run the animations. And that is the long and the short of it. Thanks for watching.